Okay, so I wanted to talk about passing chords today. I touched a little bit on it last week, and uh, it's a, it's a very it's getting into the advanced territory of things, you know, require one to have a good understanding of chord changes and stuff like that. And one of the things I wanted to start doing is take the hymns and start to reharmonize them. Because I got bored, I get bored with hymns. And so I start to mess around with the chords and come up with different ways of playing them. And people find them interesting. I also did a tutorial on, on him reharmonize. I don't know if you guys can see that, my call to action. Um, it's a paid tutorial. Love you guys to support that if you can. And it's on uh, a particular hymn that I reharmonized, the joyful, joyful, we adore thee. But today I'm going to take a different hymn and I'm going to go through it with you guys and show you different things that I have done or I would do when I'm playing hymns of this nature. Also, just want you to, to note that I have my chat window open, so I'm reading your messages. So if there's anything you'd like to ask me, whether or not if it, it's pertaining to this particular topic, feel free to just type it in the box right there and I'll skip over and answer it or give you a demonstration on that. So feel free to shoot whatever questions you have. So this hymn is called Sing Them Over Again to Me or Wonderful Words of Life. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. You guys familiar with that hymn? So that's basically how it's written. I was just doing a quick read out of the hymnal right here. Then it goes to... Just turn this off. So that's the hymn in its original structure. Kind of straight and, and um, in my opinion, not very interesting. So if you take the first line again. You can probably do something like. I did there instead of just do which is going from the G to the D I did What, what that is, I went from the G to the E minor 7th to the D, the A minor 7th, and the melody has that nice B, so that creates a 9th, then, and that's uh, D7 with the add 9. Repeat that. And the reason that could work is one, these two chords are related. E minor is a relative minor for G major. So that means I could 
add that E minor in instead of staying on the G. For the entire thing, I can create some additional movements by adding that E minor and making it a seventh. Now, instead of going to the D, I know I could go to the A minor because for one, the melody ends in an A and then it moves up to a D. So all of that right there theoretically match. Any, any questions on that so far? Oh, Kathleen, you're here. Welcome, Kathleen. I just responded to your, uh, <laughs> your email. Well, thank you for joining us. I was just talking about him reharmonization. So. I just take that here and I put an additional stuff in it. I'm going to go over it a little slower now and hold the chord so you can see what I'm doing. But again, please feel free to ask me any questions. I still haven't seen any questions in the chat yet, so probably you guys are just absorbing what I'm doing. Um, but uh, yeah, please feel free to ask any questions. Here we go. I'm gonna do it again, so. E minor, seven and nine. G seven, add nine. That's how you can play, sing them over again to me. And it goes, sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of thy beauty see. Wonderful words, wonderful. 
wonderful words of life.